weekly interference mission recently concluded with an exciting finale that included a long-awaited showdown with not Chris and a vision from the darkness. So this is the conclusion to the season of Arrival story, which leads us nicely into Beyond Light. So the following is a look at the weekly interference mission conclusion, including Nokris, Savathun, and the darkness powers on Europa. And if you're new around here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for all the latest Destiny 2 content and turn on notifications by hitting that bell. Since the start of the season, we've been doing the weekly interference quest, and this was a weekly three-part mission where we'd have to pick up something from the Prismatic Recaster, take part in the contact public event, collect umbral traces, normally by taking part in the Menagerie, Gambit, Crucible or Escalation Protocol, and then finally heading back to the Cradle on Io to finish the interference quest. This interference mission has three different versions as part of a loop. So we've got the Ritual Encounter, the Relic Encounter, and the Crystal Encounter. And they cycle around each week. And once we've defeated the enemies as part of the mission, we have a chat to Eris, and she would unveil a message from the darkness each week. From the very start of the season of Arrival, Savathun has been trying to intercept or block the messages from the darkness to us. We found out earlier in the season in a cutscene with Eris and Zavala in the tower that Savathun was part of the narrative for the season, with Savathun's Taken appearing each time we took part in the contact public event. This is because the darkness is reaching out to us, trying to offer us something, perhaps something that Savathun wants for herself. Back on June the 10th, Bungie released some lore called False Idols up on their website. And this is well worth a read itself, but I'll go through a few details from it here. And it details the meeting of Nokris and Savathun. So Nokris is the firstborn son of Oryx, the Taken King of the Hive, and Nokris was imprisoned in the icy depths of Mars by the Warmind Rasputin. Savathun is the sister of Oryx and the likely focus of the upcoming Witch Queen expansion in the latter part of 2021. So let's have a look at that lore and the meeting. A singularity throne perverted the space before him, and the Queen of Lies, wrapped in distortion and gravitational lensing, sat within its depth. Her voice was a distant redshift discord, and all around him. Her presence, the realm itself, boundless and willing to take. Savathun's words spewed forth, breaker of packs, a heretic stands here. What denial has yet to be given that you would return to me? I fed the worm, and it still faltered, he said. Not Chris stared directly into the empty point of space, continually caving in on its form. He could barely define her silhouette within the warp. To falter is its nature. Savathun's words were tinged in curiosity, though not by your efficacious methods. Nokris preened the flesh of his face back to display a skeletal smile. The sword bears no truth. The worms are gods of thin ambition and reign vast nothing. Brave words in this place. Do you not think they are watching? Nokris bowed his head for the first time since he was drawn here. The queen is clever. You did not share my father's single-minded ambition, nor my brother's taste for glory. You wish to serve me? The thin image twitched within the backlit accretion glow. My life is spent. Servitude to those who cast me away. Our blood is all that remains of the old pact. Then let us make use of each other. Nokris raised his gaze. What use would I be to a god? No gods. He nodded. So, it has always been. Savathun's voice converged onto him from every direction. You, a usurper, the first tug at the end of a chain. To act as a distraction or await slaughter? Nokris's voice sunk with disappointment. No, as a thorn, you have circumvented the deep through forbidden sacrament, and so you shall continue. The deep fears me, as we feared you. Ignorance keeps, knowledge usurps. In this, you have found purpose in my court. The high priest's shoulders straightened. You feared me? In a younger time, intents were narrower. I see your value as we should have then. All who deny you, blinded by the sword, let them fade away as grains from the scythe. Am I the implement? You are the mechanism by which we sever the chain, Savathun's voice filled his skull with silken promise. Teach me your necromances, usurper of the ordered way, so that together we may circumvent the anchored logic that drags us into the depths. Serve as foil to scatter the pieces to their grand game across the cosmos, as Zol did for my heart. I offer a trade, 
Knowledge for knowledge. Grant me sight into the dreaming mind's talent, and I will teach you what you ask. A rebellious bargain in the midst of dark tides, it is bound. Under my symbol, reborn and made in my image, our bargain will set new beginnings in motion. The masters convene here, concern dripped from Nocris's words. Do we mean to move against them? Not so directly. A rival is imminent. A shadow will reach out and make itself known. Am I obscure to the connection? Where sky meets deep, you shall be the screen that sows dissonance, and for it we will walk unhindered by the praxic inclinations of those who believe themselves mighty. Nocris saw the scheme, the will of many bent to our hand, no longer do they draw upon us. Freedom, they are beset against each other, we walk the space between, and a chord is struck. Speak my name. Savathun, subjugant to none, sword breaker and queen to the taken throne. To me, you are bonded. Go forth and enact my will. So really interesting stuff there from the law, and Savathun is making a pact with Nocris. Knowledge for knowledge. She wants to understand his knowledge and skills for necromancy in exchange for the sight in the dreaming mind's talent, and that is likely to be translated to the ability to take. As the weeks have gone by, Nocris has been speaking to us in the court of Savathun and also trying to prevent the messages from getting to us from the darkness. Each time we speak to Eris, the message appears to be blocked in some manner, and this is either likely by Nocris or Savathun attempting to intercept the message. The whole story is detailed through the lore book called The Singular Exegeti, and each week as we complete the interference mission, we get a new lore entry open up, slowly revealing the story. It's a really good read and you should definitely check it out either in-game or through a website like Ishtar Collective, and I'll link that down below so you can check it out. In a very short summary, it's an attempt by the darkness to persuade us away from the light, so rather than come at us all guns blazing, they want to grant us powers. So there's lore entries like Eggshell, where the darkness paints the light and the traveller as something to be outgrown, something for us to come of age and be our true selves. Contrast demonstrates the persuasive power of the darkness speaking to Eris, and it reads as follows. There are jaded guardians, strangers to true loss, who claim that the traveller has ulterior motives and the darkness is a natural force. They worship grey. For them, the line between right and wrong is as fine as silk and just as easy to cut. Fools. Evil is real, even in a world of grey. It must be named and fought, because left unchecked, it takes everything. Those who excuse and denies evil's existence are its greatest allies. Those who mistake its causes for moral justification are its favourite pawns. Yet the pyramid challenges me. Would not the light destroy the darkness, just as darkness would destroy the light? Why do we call change evil when it's natural and inevitable, like the Earth's winter or the sun's spots? Because some change must be resisted. If we did not prepare for winter, we would die in it. We would cease to exist. So now I find myself using the enemy's philosophy to justify my opposition to the enemy. A neat little trap. Is winter evil? It causes evil. It leads us into evil choices through scarcity and pain. But winter is the result of natural circumstance. Even if it had a mind, it could never choose to become an endless summer. It would always hurt us simply by being itself. But does that make it evil? And if we were to build shelters and weapons out of ice, would we become evil? Survival in winter requires winter craft. Survival in darkness requires a new idea of good and evil. One that will not collapse into moral indifference. Or we will all be dredgens in the end. This past week we experienced the final message, but before the final message from the darkness we had a showdown with Nocris in a familiar location, what looked to be the Court of Oryx, now named the Court of Savathun. Similar to the original Court and the Dreadnought in Destiny 1, Nocris appeared through this portal, feeding us more lines once again, much like he's been doing all season. And then finally, when Nocris was defeated, we had a message from Eris. And she gives us some encouragement in regards to the defeat of Nocris, and then attempts to teleport us back. However, something intercepts once again with a familiar voice. Nocris is an abomination. His name stricken from the world's grave. You've done well to purge his stain from this failing court. Why would Sabathun work with him? With... 
Nakris is an exploited outcast, Little Light. A necromancer. Though I'm sure the Taken Queen saw value in his craft. Death rituals to buck the worm's game. I dare not wonder how she meant to wield that knowledge. We shouldn't dwell on it, you know. He's not coming back from that. Good riddance. Savathun's haze has diminished considerably, though not completely. She's still out there, hiding. And I hope she saw what became of her brood. Hold still. I will fetch you. Don't you see? It is as we once said. In light, there is only weakness. Only failure. Only death. But where the light takes, the dark gives. No longer will you be a pawn. No longer will you watch the lives of those you care for be lost. Remember, in darkness there is only strength. Only victory. Only life. Ancient power awaits you on Europa. This is a new place. The pyramid idol in the middle of the room with the different races of the Destiny universe focused on the center in worship. We got the Cabal, the Fallen, the Hive, and humankind here, but the Vex, they're missing. The darkness tells us of a journey to Europa to find our new darkness power there. It's a great scene with some fantastic imagery and storytelling. And once we're teleported back to Eris, the final message is perhaps we're not the only ones the darkness have been speaking to. This transmission can be translated as contact. Not physical, more ethereal. Influential. It is conjugated here as an action with a singular subject, but innumerable objects. Guardian, what if we are not the only ones to whom the darkness speaks? Our enemies are turning to the darkness. The Red Legion is broken, the Almighty destroyed. The remaining Cabal will either join Callus's death cult or seek his daughter. And the Fallen, well, we've driven them to the edge of survival. Turn them against each other. How many will look to the Whirlwind for an advantage over rivals? By pushing them back from the light, have we groomed more supplicants to the darkness? We are in an arms race, and if we do not learn to use our greater enemy's power, our lesser enemies surely will. Well, it will be interesting to see what Zavala, Ikora and the rest think of this. We've got roughly four weeks to go before Beyond Light, and we still have to get there. We know Eris, the Drifter and the Stranger are going to meet on Europa, and perhaps they're going to meet us there. We've seen Eris with something similar to what could be Stasis abilities, summoning the ice from the very ground on Europa, as the Drifter and the Stranger watch on. So there's bound to be a few exciting things left to lead us up to those events. Well, let me know what you think down there in the comments. What do you think of the weekly interference mission conclusion, and how do you think we're going to transition to Europa for Beyond Light? Well, that is it for this video on the conclusion of the weekly interference mission, and thank you so much for watching. For more Destiny 2 content like this, hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. If you want to join the community, check out the Discord link in the description, or you can follow me on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out these other videos on the channel. Thanks again, I'll see you in the next video.